Roy Fudge with Shoreline Marine Products. I've been a certified marine mechanic for over 25 years and I'm here today as Captain Weekend. Today I'm going to share a variety of easy boating projects that you can do yourself with the common tools that you've probably got in your toolbox right now. I'll be by your side every step of the way and together we'll install a variety of top quality Shoreline Marine Products to get you back on the water faster. So let's get going. Grab your tools and I'll share my tips and tricks so you can easily install those new hot shoreline accessory and replacement parts and be your own Captain Weekend. Hi, it's Lloyd, Captain Weekend with Shoreline Marine Products. I was out on the water last week, my live well went out. Going to have to replace it, not going to be a problem. 10, 15 minutes, I'll be done with it. I chose the Shoreline Marine pump. Nice thing about this is I don't have to worry about buying a 90 degree or an inline pump. I can change any of the connections on it to however I want to. Pull the intake out, slide it into the side, it'll be a 90 degree. I can leave it where it's at and it'll be an inline pump. A couple things you're going to need, crimper, electrical connectors. You can either buy a package that has a whole bunch of them in it, so you have some spares around. If you don't have a crimper, we've got the crimper already in a package that will have a few connectors for you. Liquid electric tape to go over the connections if you need it. Going to need some type of a sealant to seal your hole when you put the new pump in. You can either use goop or any type of marine sealant long as it's an underwater sealant. I like to use silicone just in case I have to replace the pump down the road. It's a little bit easier to come out. Don't have to worry about it getting stuck in there and having a hard time getting everything out. Tools you're going to need. You're going to need a wire stripper, crimper dikes, flathead screwdriver or a nut driver to get your clamps off the hoses, and a crescent wrench to remove your old pump and put your new pump in. Might need, depending on how it's assembled, a Phillips bit on a drill gun or a Phillips screwdriver, also a heat gun in case you're using heat shrink butt connectors. First thing we want to make sure we do when we're starting to remove the old pump, disconnect the battery, that way we have no power back here at the back, don't have to worry about shorting anything out when we start cutting wires. You want to get your wires out of the way. nice and loose so we can get through everything. Want to remove our hose. Go ahead and cut our wires. Well I found my leak. The nipple for the hose was actually cracked on my pump. That's where my leak was coming from. As I was pulling the hose off, the nipple actually broke inside. Need a couple more tools to help rectify this. Easiest way to do it, take a pair of pliers, crush the nipple inside, then you can take a pair of needle nose, reach in, give it a twist, and it'll pull right out. On my assembly, we've got a scoop on the back, it's a low water pickup with boats that have the live well pumps coming straight out of the back when you're actually up on plane they won't pick up because there's no water on the back I've actually installed a little scoop on there to help that out a lot of them have just screens on the back you'll have to remove this or the screen to get to it on this assembly it's really easy to do it's got four Phillips head screws comes right off Nuts right there. Little twist. Pull the nut off. Ready to take it out. Usually take a, your wrench and just give it a couple of taps. And your pump's out, ready to go. All right, got our old pump out. Have to set our new pump up. You can see this is a 90 degree pump and our outlet is coming out of the side. So we'll have to adjust our new pump to match the old pump. 
Real simple to do. Unscrew your threaded portion that goes through your transom. Unscrew the plug. Screw it into the bottom, make sure it's good and tight. Take your inlet, screw it back in. Make sure it's good and tight. You're going to use this nut and on the outside of the transom. The rubber washer goes on the inside of the transom. Okay, back the nut all the way off. And as you can tell, our outlet and our inlet are on the same side. Won't be able to put it in and get our hose to it, so we're going to have to adjust our outlet now. Real simple to do. Four Phillips head screws, pull them out, slide your base around to the direction you want it set up in, put the screws back in, you'll be ready to go. Have everything adjusted like we need it, put the screws back in the base. Little tip on this, since you've got stainless steel screws going into a plastic base, if you take your screws and turn them backwards a little bit, you'll feel the screw actually click into the threads that are already in the base, and it'll screw right in. You won't be cross-threading anything, won't be stripping the plastic out so you, your screws won't hold, won't develop any leaks. Make sure they're nice and snug, and you're ready to put it in the hole. I like to use silicone on these because if I have to replace it again down the road, it's not near as hard to pull out. If you use 5200 or Goop, which is a, a really good adhesive, it makes it hard to pull out. You'll wind up busting up plastic and having to pick the plastic out and then dig all the other stuff out, all your sealant, once you get your pumps ready to install. Other thing you need to do, make sure your surfaces are nice and clean so your sealant adheres to it and you don't have any leaks develop from dirt and debris that's underneath the silicone and it doesn't get a good seal. Take our silicone, put a nice little bead around the inlet. I usually run a little bit up the threads just to help protect the transom just in case any water happens to get in there. Slide it in. Put a little bit of silicone around the outside here. Run our nut down on it. You're going to have to hold the pump on the inside. Might need a hand depending on your boat. Take your wrench. Snug it up. And then depending on if you have the scoop or a screen, if you have the scoop, you can cut it off pretty close, or if you leave it open, you can cut this off pretty close. Otherwise, if you have a screen, you need to leave about a half an inch of thread so that you can thread your screen on. You're ready to go to the wiring and hook your hose up and get back to fishing. Quick little tip on your cleanup. All of your silicone that's run out on the outside, if you take a damp rag, wipe around it, Cleans everything up nice and neat. Gives it a nice professional finish on the end of it. Okay, now we're ready to hook our hose back up, hook our wires up. Really simple. Be a red or brown wire that'll go to your brown wire from your old pump. Black wire goes to black for your ground. Normally on the boats they have a brown wire run into your pumps. Hopefully yours is that way. Just keep track of when you cut the wires off of which wire went where. The black wire is always ground. Colored wire is going to be switch positive off your console switches. I always like to stick my hose on first. That way if I have to run a wire along it, I can use it to tie wrap everything down. And I can take my wires, use my heat straight bunk connectors with liquid electric tape over them, make sure we have a good sealed connection on there, help reduce the corrosion down the road, 
and we'll be ready to go fishing.